Good morning, everyone. This is Ivan, and welcome back to the Ivan Rides YouTube channel. Today, we're finally going to talk about the mods that I have on my Super 73 RX and why I have them. So, if you've ever been curious to find out what's on the bike, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. It's good to have you on board today. When I was thinking about making this video, I wasn't sure how I was going to shoot it. I was thinking maybe I should speak in front of the camera and set up the bike. But I decided we should do it in classic Ivan Rides fashion. We should do it on the road while riding because at the end of the day, the channel is called Rides. So we'll do it that way. So we're talking about the mods on my Super 73 RX. When I first got the bike, the one of the things that really attracted me to it was it was a blank canvas. When I first saw it, it was begging to be modded. My brain was like immediately racing as I was purchasing it, thinking about all of the mods that I wanted to do. But then, you know, I had to take a step back and kind of focus myself. Because with a bike like this, it's really easy to kind of go overboard with the mods. Like, I didn't want my bike to look like Optimus Prime's love child with a Christmas tree. I kind of had to, like I said, find a way to focus myself. So what I did was I implemented four parameters that I wanted to... Uh, accomplish with the bike. First parameter was I wanted a clean and mean design. I wanted to maintain the iconic look of the Super 73. The color scheme that I wanted to go with was black and blue. And then I wanted to make it look more aggressive. Number two, I wanted to make the bike more comfortable. The original settings for the Super 73 RX Mojave is quite stiff. So I wanted to soften that up a little bit. Number three was I wanted to extend the range. 30 miles on the single battery is pretty good, but I wanted to kind of go a little bit further if I needed to. And number four was I didn't always want to carry my backpack. So we were looking for storage solutions for the bike. Notice how at any point in that I didn't mention a 72 volt mod upgrade. I specifically bought the Super 73 because I wanted a chill cruiser in contrast to my Nami Bernie. So I'm quite happy with the 31 to 33 miles an hour that the bike is able to achieve. As a person who's not very mechanically gifted, all the mods that were put on this bike were basically plug and play. Please, if you are going to do your own work, this is the PSA portion. Please know the limitations of your skills and if it requires you to bring it to an expert to do work on the battery and the electricals of the bike, please do so. Find yourself a professional and have them do it. But now that we got that out the way, let's talk mods. So when I was saying the design, uh, I wanted clean and mean. So the first thing that I did was I cleaned up the bike. Uh, the thing with the Super 73's front end over here was it was quite a nest of wires. So first thing I did was I went on Amazon. I bought myself a one inch wire roll. Uh, it is a cable management thing that you can buy. And I used a couple of zip ties and I cleaned this up into this really nice uh, straightforward uh, split that you see in the front of the bike. And as for 
the main portion of the bike, there are two things that you'll notice about the bike that give it its look. The first thing is the kit that's on the bike. The kit was created by a company called Flow Carbon. Uh, they make carbon fiber kits for Super 73. When I was deciding which kit to go with, I had three options with Flow Carbon. Uh, first option was the classic carbon fiber weave uh, in a glossy finish. Then the other option was the classic carbon fiber weave with the matte finish. And the third option was a special edition forged carbon glossy. I ended up deciding to go with the forged carbon because I liked that in some lights it keeps that blacked out look of the bike alive. And in certain lights, I like that the squares on the carbon fiber end up looking like camouflage. I thought that was a really cool touch because it would add depth to the, to the bike. So I ended up getting that. And the second thing that will really stand out are the tire covers. For those of you that don't know, I used to be a fixed gear guy here in New York City. My bike had the rear aero disc and the 50 millimeter rims in the front. I wanted to recreate that look on the Super 73. After doing some research, I ended up going with a New York based company called Raid Dynamics. The first set that I got from them were the Mark 5s. I liked that they were quite flat and the little slits gave it some visual interest. But I do want to tell you the story of how the rear cover uh, came about. Uh, after I purchased the, the Mark Fives, I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw that Ray Dynamics posted this teaser trailer um, about their special projects division. This was supposed to be a way to make custom covers for their clients. And the first thing that I saw from them kind of reminded me of the Philippines. So once again, the gears were turning in my head and I was just like, hmm. What can I make? As you guys know, I am a proud Filipino and I love finding creative ways of displaying my heritage on the bike. And I wanted a rear cover that if you knew, you knew. And if you don't, it's just a cool design. So I started making these designs on my iPhone and this was kind of the initial idea that I came up with. I reached out to Shelby at Raid Dynamics and I sent them that. So the fun thing with working with Shelby at Raid Dynamics on this project was he was pretty much as excited as me about the design of the rear halo. So after a couple of weeks of back and forth and waiting for production, we were finally able to announce my custom one of one Kabayan Edition Halo. Uh, the reason I called it Kabayan Edition is because, you know, like I said, if you know, you know. Kung alam mo kung ano yun, di alam mo. Kung hindi, it's cool, you know? It's, uh, it's just a really cool pattern. In my honest opinion, this is the highlight of my bike. And I really want to thank uh, Shelby and the team at Ray Dynamics for being able to bring this concept to life. So after those two major things were done, there were a couple of uh, minor things that I wanted to adjust with the look of the bike. I wanted to maintain the signature look of the RX with the front plate, so I just added the Gemini Titan OLED 4000s. Those are these Baja style headlights that you see on the front of the bike. And speaking of lights, I wanted to originally add underglow to the bike, but I just thought that would be a little too much and it wouldn't fit within the design aesthetic that I was thinking of for the set for this RX. So I ended up just doing the arc light pedals from Redshift. Uh, it was a fun way to add a little bit more visibility to yourself at night while also giving the bike this really cool underglow effect. And I wanted to continue with the aggressive cafe racer styling of the bike. So when I was looking for side mirrors, 
I knew I wanted these round ones. But the thing was, for the longest time, the blur boundary ones were, were always sold out. So when I first put the bike together, I was using Kemimoto's, the rounds. Um, to be honest with you, I feel like they're, they're pretty similar. So in order to stay in line with the black and blue theme of the bike, I ordered these blue anodized grip clamps from DD Components. And while I was at it, I also ordered these blue anodized uh, valve caps. And with all of these on the bike, I was finally happy with where it was visually. But like I said before, I was looking to upgrade the ride feel of the bike. The 550 pound spring that comes with the RX was a little stiff for my liking. I get why they use it because they want to have a higher ceiling for those that either want to double up on the bike as far as riders or for the folks that are just bigger than me and heavier than me. That's fine. So I ended up switching out the stock 550 pound springs for these 300 pound rock shocks from Amazon. It was a big difference with how soft the ride was, but the seat was still kind of, uh, pun intended here, a pain in the ass. Since the original seat was pretty uncomfortable, I had this custom seat made by Lorenzo Tapia at Tapia Seats and Sounds. This is their cafe racer style, and I opted not to put any branding on it. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. I chose a black synthetic leather that is more water resistant. I chose a diamond quilted pattern on the top. And then I also ended up using blue contrast stitching to kind of play on the blue tang color of the bike. The last bit of comfort that I want to talk about are these grips. Uh, the grips I ended up choosing were DD Component Super Cush. They have been some of my favorite grips since I've been riding my bike. They're really nice because they have a great feel and they're very comfortable with or without the glove. I think the diameter is just right and for a cruiser I think this was the the perfect choice of grips. And now that we're happy with the look of the bike and the ride comfort now we want to go far. So that's where these next two mods come in. The first mod that I did was originally just the 52 teeth chainring. Uh, I believe these are Decus from Amazon. I wanted to be able to help the bike pedal along between, I would say, 10 to 20 miles an hour initially to help boost the range because the shy battery system was quite a bit of a weight. So I opted for these and it did really help out with uh, in the beginning. Upgrading the 52 teeth chain ring was great and all, but it wasn't the meat of the upgrade. So the Shy Battery Ranger completely eliminated my range anxiety because it effectively doubled the amount of amp hours that were on the bike. We went from 20 to 40 and that meant we went from 30 to 60 miles of range. Now the range is fun and all, but on shorter commutes, what that really means is we are able to maintain higher speeds for longer. And for the group rides, we have all the range that we could possibly want. And there is a wild card here that I wasn't sure whether it goes uh, with range or comfort. It's these new tires that I have. They're called the V-Tire E Huntsman. Uh, they're designed specifically for road and Honestly, they feel more comfortable than the Grizzlies that came with the bike. Uh, I, f I get better range as well, and it's also quieter. So uh, quality of life improvements are better with these V-Tire E Huntsman. And finally, we're gonna talk about the storage options on the bike. There are times that I want to be able to travel without bringing my backpack with me. 
So I was looking for storage solutions on the bike and I ended up going with the Raid Dynamics center mole. Now, the great thing about this center mole is it's designed specifically to fit around a Shy Battery Ranger system. So it looks really, really nice with it. So I opted to go with the Delta brackets because it allowed you to take the mole on and off without removing the battery. And on a daily basis, I don't need all the extra storage. And the storage solution is really nice because you're able to modify the, the bags that go on it. And on today's ride, for example, my loadout has an external battery to keep the batteries for my camera charging. I have extra batteries. I have extra lenses. Um, I have my electric pump in there. I have an extra spare set of uh, tubes in there. So quite a bit of stuff. And with that said, that's all of the mods that are on the bike. There are a few things here that I, I would like to bring up just because I would say they're honorable mentions. And these are like the little stickers and patches that I put on the bike to kind of uh, personalize it. Uh, we have a few of these that go on the, the mole bags that are on the center mole of the bike. And I have my uh, logo now on the, on the bike as well. And once again, as a proud Filipino, I have the sun from the flag on the main battery. And with that, I'm quite happy with how the bike turned out. Now, if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up as it really helps the channel. If you have any questions about any of the mods that I put on the bike, please leave it in the comment section down below. And if you really like my content and really want to support the channel, there is a button with my logo on the bottom right of the screen there. Just click on it and just make sure you subscribe. When subscribing, make sure you hit that bell notification so that I can notify you anytime that I release a new video. But other than that, thank you so much everyone for accompanying me on this ride. I hope you enjoyed uh, getting to know my bike and what's on it and why I put it on there. Everyone, I will catch you on the next ride. Peace out, y'all.